Hi, this is Dawn Grimshaw with Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate, and I just wanted to tell you a little bit about some issues that buyers are having right now in the market. There's a lot of times very strong competition when you go to write an offer on a house. And so people always ask, how do we get our offer accepted? What can we do to make our offer stand out from the others? So I just want to tell you a few things that I've found successful with buyers that I've worked with. And of course, the most important one for everybody is price. The seller is looking for the highest priced offer, but that is not always the only thing they're looking for. So when you're writing an offer, there's a lot of different things in the contract as far as terms. So that can be closing date. One way to help you win would be to have a closing date that the seller would choose. So if you can be flexible, that really helps you in your offer. With that closing date, sometimes you can actually give the sellers a delayed possession date. So you close on a certain day, but maybe you give them a couple days to move. Um, and that's really appealing for a seller too. So they don't have to try to close on their new purchase and move out and do everything in the same day. So that's one other thing that you can do to make your offer look a little bit better. The other thing that's really important is not just price, but financing terms. So sometimes there's different types of loans that people use. If you're doing an FHA or a VA loan, unfortunately those do not compete as well as a conventional or of course a cash offer. So when you're getting your pre-approval done, if you can do a conventional offer, that is really going to help you set your offer apart from the other ones. The other thing to consider is closing costs. So it used to be very common, and maybe if you've bought a house in the past, or if you have a friend or family member who did, it used to be common to ask a seller to pay some closing costs for you. And unfortunately, in the very competitive market that we're in today, you can't really ask a seller to pay for any of your costs. So you need to make sure that you have your down payment and your closing costs saved before you're ready to write an offer on a property. Of course, some of the other things that they're gonna look for are inspections. So you as a buyer, 100% should do a whole house inspection, but some buyers are actually not including that in their offer. And if your offer has an inspection and maybe somebody else's doesn't, that of course is gonna to appeal to the seller. Some things that we can do to get creative with that where you can still have an inspection and make sure that your house is not gonna have any huge issues, you're not buying a lemon, is to do an inspection for informational purposes only if you're comfortable with that. And that means you can still do the whole house inspection, but when you do it, you're only gonna say, yes, I still wanna buy the house, or no, I don't. So we're not gonna go back and ask the seller to fix things. So that will be more appealing to them than a traditional Whole house inspection where they know they're going to have to probably make some repairs some of the other things that you can do to be competitive are a little bit more creative and sometimes people aren't comfortable doing these things but some people will take out their appraisal contingency so if the house doesn't appraise for whatever the final purchase price is they will actually remove that contingency and they'll make up the difference on their side or you can do you'll make up the difference up to a certain dollar amount if that's something that you're interested in doing some of the other things that you can do to be creative is of course getting the sellers to know a little bit about you. Um, you can do a letter or include pictures and a little bit about your family um, to just you know make them get the warm and fuzzies and see you know why you love the house and, and make them feel good about selling it. But because the most important thing is price, of course you can always write a high offer on that house or what we're using a lot right now is what's called an escalation clause. So with an escalation clause, you can say that you will go over any other in writing offer by a certain dollar amount. So it could be $1,000, $2,000 over that other offer up to, and you would put a cap in there. Now you always wanna have a cap because you just never know how high somebody else is willing to go. And so I educate my buyers that that cap should be at whatever dollar amount you're willing to lose that house at. So if you love, 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 love that house and you absolutely have to have it, of course you're gonna wanna make your cap a little bit higher. If you're like, if I get it, I get it, and if I don't, I don't, then maybe that cap's a little bit lower. But you definitely need a cap and it needs to be whatever price that you're like, if somebody else will pay that price for it, that's fine, they can have it. I don't want it then. So those are some ideas on things that you can do to make your offer a little bit more creative.